I want to uh, provide you with, uh, with three or four main messages uh, today. Uh, the first message is, uh, we are here to stay as the United Nations. Uh, as many have seen, the crisis of recent uh, days uh, since the December 15 has led to significant insecurity around the country. It started in Juba, but has spread, as we all know, to several other states. Um, uh, we have seen also foreign nationals leave the country and quite a number of uh, non-critical uh, staff, non-essential staff, be evacuated by many aid agencies and missions. Um, on that account, uh, our message is uh, that the United Nations is here to stay. Our mandate is to remain and support and to be uh, acting on our mandate of protection of civilians, uh, also under these circumstances, and maybe not least under these circumstances. So when particularly the South Sudanese population are seeing uh, departure, uh, our message to them is we are not abandoning you. Uh, we remain, we are undeterred, and we will continue to implement our mandate. Now, the presence of the United Nations in South Sudan is greater than ever. Now we are also providing shelter as part of our protection of civilians mandate to approximately 45,000 uh, individuals, civilians who have fled to our camps in seek of protection. Uh, I want to make it very clear that although non-critical staff of the United Nations uh, have relocated to uh, Entebbe in Uganda, we are also increasing our staff in critical security related areas and we are reinforcing the bases that need reinforcement. This means that we are moving uh, peacekeepers from locations that are less uh, critical at this point in time to reinforce our bases in Juba, in Bo, in Bentiu, in Pariang. This means that um, these redeployments uh, that are now taking place will uh, better be able to protect bases that are under threat um, at this point in time. We have also, uh, in Juba, been able to conduct military patrols uh, around uh, daytime last week to try to uh, pr provide a protective environment, uh, a better environment for civilians so that they can feel safer in town. And we have also commenced uh, night patrols uh, after coordination uh, with the SP SPLA. Um, now, uh, the main message in relation to protection of civilians uh, is basically that the scale of the crisis is unprecedented for us as a United Nations in South Sudan. This means that our military resources are now, without the, with the exception of the patrols in Juba, are fully engulfed and occupied with the protection of our bases. And even that is not uh, adequate everywhere, which is why we need to reinforce them. Um, we therefore have seen a scale of a crisis that implies should we see increased insecurity and fighting happen and more civilians be on the way and more civilians be under threat and attack, we will have problems with carrying out the mandate that we have been given by the Security Council. We have therefore uh, sent a strong message to New York that resources are needed for the mission to be able to face this situation. And we have got positive feedback. Uh, we believe uh, later today in New York there will be a Security Council meeting which will look at uh, the proposals that have been tabled by the Secretary General for reinforcements of this mission, the United Nations mission in South Sudan. This implies both uh, uh, troops, but also aviation assets and uh, force multipliers uh, that can help us uh, in, uh, in protecting civilians. So my first message, therefore, is we are here to stay uh, as the United Nations, and we would like to convey to all South Sudanese in particular that message. But to be able to implement our mandate, we need resources and additional resources, which we hope now uh, will come uh, from the Security Council. My second message is we are here to help. And this is, of course, more the responsibility of the humanitarian coordinator. Uh, but as the head of the UN family, I also want to reiterate that um, humanitarian uh, assistance now is underway. For the 45,000 in the different locations around the country that is uh, uh, UNMISS is protecting, uh, we have been able to, to provide water um, on behalf of the mission. Uh, and shelter and some limited medical assistance for those in need. However, 
everyone remaining in a location like this over time will know that that is not adequate. Um, we were hoping to see the environment improve so that people could return to their homes. As yet, many do not feel that they can do that, and in many parts, several parts of the country, insecurity is still prevailing. This means that we are handing over the responsibility for the humanitarian uh, operation in the camp to our humanitarian colleagues. Um, the status of that at this point in time is that uh, uh, WFP, uh, the World Food Programme, is assisting with uh, food distribution and uh, the different clusters of the humanitarian agencies are now working to look at what can be done to increase humanitarian assistance to those in, uh, in the camps. My uh, DSRSG uh, deputy, uh, RCHC, will uh, provide, I think, tomorrow more information to the press about the humanitarian response and will also give more detail on the humanitarian needs uh, outside the camps. I will, uh, I will uh, limit myself to what is directly relevant uh, to the operations uh, in, the, in the areas controlled by the mission. We are also going to see a price tag uh, of, uh, of uh, significance, I think, tomorrow. Uh, the uh, Toby Lancer, the, the, the humanitarian coordinator, will say more about that. My third message is that this is a political crisis and it has, can only be resolved through political means. Um, this crisis started as a political struggle within the ruling party of the country, the SPLM, and it can only be resolved through, uh, through dialogue and through mediation. There is no military solution to this conflict. Uh, the crisis is therefore not an ethnic conflict. I want to reiterate that. It is a political struggle. There may be elements who seek to exploit the current crisis to pursue their own uh, agendas, but this is fundamentally a power uh, struggle. It is very critical that we don't portray it as anything else. To resolve the political struggle and the crisis in the leadership, uh, not in the leadership, between, between the two uh, uh, parties, um, I am in touch with both sides on a regular basis. Uh, I have been throughout the crisis, and we are also seeing a stronger engagement by the region, uh, the IGAD countries, and uh, they are engaging, uh, and I think uh, uh, key leaders uh, at the highest levels uh, are now trying their level best uh, to get uh, the parties to a dialogue and to the negotiating table. At the same time, we are calling, and I've repeatedly called, for restraint, for calm, and for holding back, and not uh, allowing this violence to continue. And this is particularly important, as it can permeate uh, into uh, community-motivated uh, violence, which is, in the South Sudanese context, very, very uh, dangerous. We have seen uh, the, the signs of this already, uh, and we do not want to see any development uh, of this nature take hold of in, in this country. Uh, and we have the historical analogies fresh in our minds. We do not want that to happen in South Sudan. Um, so we encourage um, uh, both sides now uh, to be willing to, to come forward to the negotiating table with immediate effect uh, that the EGOD uh, uh, countries uh, provide um, the basis uh, for the talks, and that we, uh, in this situation, uh, urge the, the both, both, both sides to stop the violence uh, and to encourage all other elements that might be in, urge all other elements that might be exploiting this in in uh, in a way we have seen the past few days to stop. I have on that account, and that's my th fourth message: stopping the violence. I have repeatedly called on all South Sudanese and all parties in the current situation to refrain from any community-motivated violence. We condemn in the strongest possible terms any violence and killings, and certainly those that of, of, of violence that actually fuels uh, the crisis further um, along ethnic lines. At a time uh, when unity among South Sudanese is more needed than, than ever, um, we really need to prevent uh, any type of incitement um, uh, of this nature. At this juncture also, discipline, command and control in all security forces is of utmost importance. 
and we uh, are uh, emphasizing in the strongest possible terms that accountability for any actions uh, of violence, of killings of any nature needs to be faced with accountability uh, and clear and strong and immediate action. Finally, and this is my uh, last uh, introductory remarks, uh, in my country, this is Christmas Day, the 24th of December. In other countries, tomorrow's is Christmas Day, but for us, it is Christmas Day. Um, and uh, as we know, the message of Christmas is the message of peace, of the Prince of Peace. And for me, it's important uh, to call on everyone to be reminded that uh, at this particular time, uh, we would like to urge both leaders Anyone that has influence of the current situation, as well as all South Sudanese citizens, to contribute to this Christmas being a Christmas of peace and not of violence. So that's my last message. Thank you. Uh,